Hello and welcome to another technical takedown the hard way. In today's video, we are going to discuss cameras. I know I've made a video about cameras before, guys. I made a video a few weeks ago about the types of hardware that we are going to be bringing with us. But uh, I think I spoke very vaguely about the two main cameras, the Canon EOS 70D that I'm filming off right now, that you see me on right now, and the Sony a7C. I didn't really go deeply into it. And the reason why is because I hadn't used those cameras, especially the Sony but I hadn't used the, the Canon 70D in quite some time. The reason why is because I'd been doing the vast majority of my filming on my DJI Pocket, the tiny little pocket thing. The video is so good, so clean, 4K, just, I loved it. I loved it, so I started using it and I like the fact that it had this really good tracking system, this tracking uh, software on the gimbal, which means that I could just play it, just record it, and it would follow me everywhere I went. I loved it. I felt like I needed a bit of a change, and I felt like this channel needed a bit of a change, hence the reason why you see me using this camera right now, the ER70D. Partly because the quality of the video on this is better. It just is better. It's a, it's a better lens. Everything else is better about it, and it works better in lower lights. I know what you're asking. You're asking, why are you bringing two big bulky cameras with you? Well, there is a reason for this. The Canon EOS 70D is a camera that I know how to use and I like it. I like the fact that it's a big camera, that I can hold it in my big hands. You know, I've got huge hands, so it feels good in my hands. I, I know how the, the interface works. I like that about this camera. Um, I like the fact that it's touchscreen. I'm not even sure if the Sony is touchscreen or not. I know that I've been trying to use use it as a touchscreen and it doesn't work. Maybe you need to turn it on or maybe it doesn't have it at all. I'd be surprised if it doesn't have it because we paid somewhere in the region of two and a half thousand euros for this particular camera. However, the Canon is very user friendly for me and there is something else that I like about the Canon. I'm gonna show you guys right now. These, these are the lenses. We have a 50 mil prime that I'm using right now. Um, and we have this, which is a 18 to 135 zoom lens, which is a really good lens actually, guys. I really like this lens. Where would this come in handy, of course, if I wanted to take photographs of something which is far away, like animals or um, certain bits of scenery that I couldn't get on the camera um, or I couldn't get to see, you know, if we wanted to see it safely, then we could use this lens. And then we got this lens. This is a 24 mil lens. It's a macro lens, which really brings out the detail of things that are very, uh, in, in a short distance from you. So we have that and the 50 mil prime that we're using there. Um, this macro is also a prime. So it is a um, 24 millimeter prime. Okay, I don't know much about lenses, guys. So you're gonna hear me go, um, um, um. it's because I don't know much about lenses, okay? All I know is how to utilize them, how to apply them in what we plan to do. No, having this glass, I think, definitely means we should be using it. In the last video, I spoke about um, the types of lens that we plan to use um, overall. And I said that on the Overland Fam channel, we're going to use mainly anamorphic. And the reason I said mainly anamorphic is because we have all these other lenses here as well. We want to put these lenses to good use. We don't want to just, well, okay, we brought them, but we really want to use them. We want to have scope in uh, the video that you guys are watching. We don't want you just to just be 
you know, boom. We do want to standardize it, but we, we also want to make sure we have some variety in there too. So the way we do this is by having these different lenses and the different lenses that we already have, which is perfect for us. And I think that we are going to be able to do a Christopher Nolan and, you know, stick a bit of the wide in and then sometimes stick a bit of the, the, the normal sized uh, video in, you know, whatever, whenever the, the scene sort of, you know, gives us a reason to use an anamorphic or, or vice versa. It gives us more of a variety of scope, a scope in variety. Part the, that's the part of the reason why we're definitely going to bring this EOS 70D. Another reason is because, I know this sounds petty, but my wife is quite particular with me and the way I use some of this hardware. And yeah, of course, I can be a bit clumsy sometimes. I wish she had a bit more trust in me though. I really do, I really do. I went to Italy early last year, maybe, may, may, may have been the year before actually. I went to Italy and I went to make a documentary and I ended up losing a pretty critical part of my filming, my camera gear. And you know, it was brand new, you know, and it's, it, it was very annoying, but it wasn't that expensive, but it was still very annoying that I had lost that piece because um, I thought I was being careful. So yeah, she's a bit paranoid when it comes to, to this, you know, thousands and thousands of euros of gear that we're going to be bringing with us. But the way I see it is, you know, this stuff is here to be used and there's no point in us taking this stuff and just hogging it, you know, just putting it all in nice safe places. Let's use the bloody stuff. You know, you get these guys who buy Ferraris and they only drive it for like 16 miles every weekend only during the summertime. I'm not one of those people. I would never do that. If I was gonna buy a supercar, I'd drive the thing every single day. I'd drive the wheels off. I wouldn't care how many miles I put on it. If it's purely about my enjoyment, then that's what I would do. There is no point in us taking all this expensive, pretty camera gear and just being ultra careful with it to the point in which everything is safely done. No, we, we want to be careful again, but it's camera gear. We, we're okay, we'll survive. It's important for us to get the use out of this stuff. I spoke about anamorphic lenses in the last video. The reason I want to buy an anamorphic lens is because of the Sony A7C. It's a small compact camera, which definitely is part of our ethos, a build that is mainly based on having practical, compact, light overlanding, light footed overlanding. So it is an a ultra light build, which of course is going to impact us because it means that we're going to have less breakdowns because we're going to be under GWV. Okay, just letting you know, GVW gross vehicle weight. Sony, we love, we love this camera because it's small and it is very powerful. It is very durable and it takes a lot of lenses. Yesterday, we bought a lens for it. We bought the exact same lens that you see on this camera that you're watching through for the Canon EOS 70D. We bought the exact lens. We, had, we do have a kit lens for it, but we bought a 50 mil prime lens for the Canon. And I, I will make a video on this lens at some point so you guys can see it working for yourself and you can give me your opinion on it. Most of the video on Overland Fan will be filmed on the A7C and most of the video shot for the hard way will be shot on, on this lens, okay? So on the Canon EOS 70D. So we are going to have, um, a good workflow and I really do like a good workflow. I like being able to to film for the edit and not over overdo it with the with the amount of video that we have. I I'm really looking forward to this journey and I just don't want to overcomplicate things. Will we buy other stuff? Probably. You can't just buy a camera like this and think, oh, okay, then that's it. You know, I think we're we're going to buy a gimbal. Um, I've already spoken to you about the um, drone. So there are other bits and pieces of hardware that we are going to need to bring. And we're going to need a bag for that. We're gonna to have to speak to quite a lot of people now, you know, if they can help us with this 
massive journey and see if they can help us to get um, all the, the uh, types of camera protective equipment that we need. So really exciting stuff, really exciting stuff. I'm sure there is more that I wanted to speak to you about. Um, I didn't do a direct comparison today because I still haven't used the Sony a7C that much yet. Um, so I think I will do a video with a direct comparison and then that will give you a bit more uh, of an idea of how these two cameras really differ. Technical wise, guys, the, the, the Sony a7C is just so quick that the autofocus is unreal. It really is. I'm making this video now and I can see the autofocus fighting right now. You know, you can't see it, but I can see it. The autofocus is really going for it and it, it is struggling here in this light in a dark room with this light on my face. The reason I've got the light here is because I wanted to make sure that the camera knew that my face was here. Here I am, you know, instead of just going crazy like it's doing now it's 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 wild so uh, that is one difference but guys this camera is really old the the, the Canon AR70D is at least six years old it's five or six years old already whereas this camera here only came out a few months ago a year ago something like that so uh, the, the Sony uh, came out yeah about a few months ago or a year ago something like that um, so the software in the a7c so quick super smooth super silky love that um, what else is the difference how light it is it is incredibly light camera to use incredibly compact even with the lens on it I do really like that about the Sony it is very, very user friendly. With the Canon ER70D, if I've got, it, it doesn't matter what, what glass I have on it, it's heavy. Even for me, a big black guy, yeah, it is difficult for me to carry that camera around my neck all day. It's, it cannot be done actually. So um, yeah, it's a difficult thing to use. Um, and it's probably one of the reasons why we haven't used it that much. There's been times where we've just said, Phew, let's just leave it here because you know it's just too heavy to carry but this camera the sony a7c we're going to carry with us everywhere we're going to be able to use it very very well uh and let's give you one more difference uh, <coughs> excuse me um i'm gonna have to cut that out cut that out i hate editing <laughs> i hate editing but um yeah it's one of those things um Another difference is the um, the quality of the video, the quality of the pictures are just better on, on this camera as well. Um, the touch screen, I don't think I've mentioned it, but I, yeah, I, I don't think the Sony a7C has a touch screen. That's a little annoying. I don't like that. You know, we used to, we, it's almost like, um, you know, inbuilt in our brains now that, we know how to use touch screens and the sony a the, the the canon has a touch screen so it's very easy for me to to use the screen to focus on my face or to to play around with the settings but i cannot do that with this camera it's a bit more fidgety I don't yeah i would have preferred it if they'd have just kept that camera <clears throat> i'd have much preferred it if they'd have kept uh, a touch screen on the Sony would have made it, the Sony a lot more usable. So guys, um, I'm gonna end it there today. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Um, please guys, I didn't tell you to do this in the beginning, but I'm gonna ask you to do it for the first time on this channel, please like, please subscribe. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the bell notification uh, because, we can't, because we are going to be uploading very regularly. Thank you for watching.